talk about women singles, we turn our attention to men singles. And it is the Lu Kuan Chu of China up against uh, Guntapon Wang Chalon of Thailand. So most of today's matches are from the bottom half of the draw. Those players who were playing last week in Kumamoto in the finals uh, were given reprieve of playing yesterday. And so there are one or two matches from the top half of the draws, but basically all matches today from the bottom half. And as you can see, it is half of the draw. And it's the third quarter. We have the reigning world champion, Kunlawuta Widasan, the number four seed from Thailand. Former world number one, he's playing against Kidambi Shrikas. So that should be a terrific match. Oh, Malaysian affair, a repeat of the Arctic Open final. So, in this section of the draw. So, here come the players, led out by Lu Guangzhou. Finalist at the China Open earlier this year, Lu Guangzhou. So this, I can tell you, will be a sixth meeting between these two players. And of the previous five, Lu Guangzhou has not only won the four of them, he's won the last four. And so. And it was only the very first encounter that Wang Chalong managed to beat his opponent after that. I will ask the guest if I profess red or black. Red. red for you. Black, your choice. Service. Service, which side? So, it was Gunpon Wang Chalong who won the toss of the coin. There he is. And he chose to serve. Promoted from the reserve list, this man didn't know whether he would be playing in the tournament at all, but because Jonathan Christie withdrew the number six seed, he got promoted from the reserve list into the main draw. 25 years of age now, from the Thai capital of Bangkok. Just about five foot eight. And he actually went down a couple of places on the world ranking that was published yesterday, down to 34. But did spend a total of five weeks across two different spells at number 12 in the world. And his big achievement is a bronze medal at the World Championships. And that was in Basel in 2019. First player from Thailand to medal in the men's singles in World Championships. Lu Guangzhou is 27 years of age. He turned 27, in fact, last month from Shuzhou in Jiangsu province. And he, like his opponent, is well down from his career high. In fact, like his opponent, he went down two places yesterday, down to 16. Uh, but did spend nine consecutive weeks from the middle of January this year at his career high of 10. He's making his third appearance here at the China Masters. He was a quarter finalist back in 2016 when the event was a Grand Prix gold, so pre the World Tour era. One final this year for Lu Guangzhou. That was the China Open Super 1000 event that I was telling you about. Well, this young man from Thailand has been struggling of late. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I can also tell you that our court officials for this one, our umpire is Fabio Beto from Italy. 
service judge, there he is, and the service judge, Latif Johari of Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Kantapong Bancharun, Thailand. And on my left, Lu Guan Zhu, China. Kantapong Bancharun to serve, that's it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Level play. So the umpire calls for this men's singles first round encounter to get underway. Lu Guangzhou in the all black kits nearest to us and the world championship bronze medalist from four years ago. A dump upon Wang Shalon, far side of the court. Nicely done. Now, I was going to tell you a little bit about this man's form. One, In fact, no. the last World Tour event that he got beyond the second round was the Japan Open last year. So that's 15 months ago and 24 tournaments ago. Has been struggling. Chris, I know you and I were discussing uh, previously, I think it was privately, I don't think it was while we were commentating, that uh, Wang Chalon, well, you know, he's gone for so long without getting through uh, to the latter stages of tournaments last year, 15 months ago, and whether, you know, players are so desperate to chase these Olympic qualifying points that... Uh, I wonder sometimes whether, in fact, they'd be better for their personal development oh. to play lower-grade tournaments. Three. Oh. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree, Jill. I think it, it's, it's such a difficult one because you want to get the higher points. You do. You want to get the prize money. You want to get everything so that you're achieving the higher level. But the problem we've had is in his last 16 tournaments, he's won four matches, which is showing at the moment he's struggling at the level and his ranking's now down to... Uh, 34. So Whoa. technically, it's only the th top 32. This is why he's promoted from uh, from the reserve list because he's right on the cusp of if he's going to get into these tournaments or not. So he's got to maybe lower his uh, the tournaments he's playing, go down a few grades so that he's a definitely in the main draw, but also winning some rounds to get that confidence back, that momentum back. Yeah. Yep, nicely done. So it's over one, four. Players played last week in Kumamoto and neither four. progressed past the second round. Nice. 
Brilliant shot, yeah, and I think the big thing in terms of one is he has won, as you identified, Silver, your, uh, a world five, medal, so there's no two. doubt about his, his possible pedigree. He's still young, he's still 25, so he's still got room to improve and to grow, but I think at the moment he's just in a almost a stumbling period where he's not quite getting the rhythm, he's not getting the results, and he's not progressing forward with his development. Yeah, it's interesting that in January earlier this year, I think he identified that himself. That's a super smash and therefore went off to Six. train with Ng Ka Long Two. and Lee Chuk Yu in Hong Kong. Because he wanted a change of scenery. But, uh, you know, it's interesting. I mean, he won that bronze medal at the World Championships in uh, Basel. And he won it before he had ever won a Super Series title or World Tour title. In fact, he's never won an international title. So that I find quite extraordinary. You know, Seven, that four two. years ago, there he was, a uh, 21-year-old at the World Championships meddling. But that progression of development has, has not happened in the way that certainly I hoped. I thought it was lovely to see a player from another country. And of course, now he's overshadowed by the world champion, Kuna Widdesan. I think that can sometimes happen. You see someone with a lot of potential and he has a quite outstanding result almost all of a sudden and doesn't always then actually transfer into the bigger results on a consistent basis. But he's still young, he still has plenty of time, but I think it's integral for him to find the key to what he needs to keep trying to improve. And already, though, we've, we've said about his, his form hasn't been phenomenal, but he has beat Lakshar Sen, who is a world-class player. Um, and he knows he can still play at that level, it's just he hasn't managed to find it consistently. When did he beat Le Lakshar? Denmark Nine, Open. Two. And then had a very, very close game with Xi Yu Chi. Yeah. Well, we'll be watching Laksha Sen a little bit later on. Three matches time, to be precise. That's very, very good play. Now, when you see him play Ten, like this, it's two. difficult to understand why he's been struggling so much. Yep, I would, I would definitely agree. He's had a fantastic start, but he looks confident. He looks comfortable. He's looking good. This is why he can definitely play at this level. It's just a little something's been missing. Drop shot from Mu Guanju. That's the one that made the difference. Yeah, good use of the body attack. Oh, 
That's a lovely cross court net shot from Gunter Pon Wanchalon. And it is a very healthy lead, a seven point advantage against Lu Guangzhou, the man who's beaten him on the last four occasions. Well, this has been a great start by this man. Play. Oh, there's a challenge. Now, I saw that as good, but we are at a slight angle. And he was very quick to challenge. He must be pretty short. One challenge remaining. Thirty silver. Five eleven. Play. Better now, this man, Lu Guangzhou. Seemed a little stiff to me in the legs when he first came on for this first round match. And he's definitely upped his pace and moving a lot smoother now. That's a super defensive shot from Gunterbond. Serve silver, 12-7. Why do you think Lu Guangzhou has really had a hold over his opponents I mean, in the last four meetings, all won by Lu Guangzhou? Is it something in the style of play? I think a lot of it does come down yeah. to, yeah, when you have a um, quite a one-sided head-to-head definitely your favorite style of play let's say your a game doesn't quite complement or doesn't quite go with 12, your, your opponent's a game so then one of you has to make a change i think that's often often what it comes down to it can also be the the arenas that you're playing in you have to play the conditions correctly Yeah. 
that's the quality of the lift from Nikon Chu. Forcing Gampong Wanchalon to try and make his net shot even tighter. And therefore forcing him into error. Notice that Gampong Wanchalon does not have a coach on the coach's bench. Oh! Yeah, he's moving much, much better. Move on to... Do you know the reason for that, Chris? Nine. No, I'm not sure how it fully works in Thailand. It appears that they have a lot of independent coaches. A lot of the singles players seem to have their own coaches, which seem different from the federation. So it seems quite a unique situation in regards to that. I don't know the specifics of why his coach isn't here today. Very nice. Quick movement around the head position. 13, nine. Behind the shuttle. And then he's got the options. Definitely I'm a big believer that coaches, you know, is a necessity in our sport. So it could be possibly a financial thing. Um, but it's such an advantage to have a coach. A bit of guidance from behind, a bit of assistance. It can even be self-belief, it can be anything. Nine. So Kentafon's playing very well. It doesn't look like a guy who's feeling negative, feeling like he hasn't maybe been playing to a high level. Started this match incredibly well. Oh, that's way that's not even close. Service over. Have you noticed Ten, any drift 14. so far, Chris? It's definitely a drift as we look from the right side to the left. Um, so a sideways drift. Yep, and there appeared to be one uh, from our end to the other end. But with the more people entering the hall, there's a chance the drift can fractionally change. So as we're looking down at the moment, the shuttle's flying faster towards the tie plane. Correct. But I would say in the first two, 15, match, uh, the first two matches I commentated on, it was incredibly obvious. In the third one, slightly less obvious. It does feel fractionally warmer in here now. So it could be the drift is slightly, just slightly changing as the hall is getting a bit more. Looks quite busy now in regard to the stadium and the, the, the crowd is building. Yeah, it's a magnificent stadium here. It really is. Capacity of over 12,500 in this beautiful arena. Silver, 11, 15. It's a very, very big stadium, very modern, almost futuristic. And if we get later in the, the tournament and there's 12,500, the, the atmosphere is going to be absolutely incredible. Casual backhand. Yes. Closing him down. 
point advantage at one stage of the Thai player. More, please. More, please. Behind you, on the line. Catch up on, it's okay. Yeah, more. I can tell you, Gunterpon Runchalon is still not happy with the court attendant and the mopping. He's accepted it now. Getting ready to play on. I thought he was going to grab the mop at one stage and <laughs> try and do it himself. <laughs> about hitting long that he wasn't 14, really concentrating, 16. I suspect, on the direction of the shot. Just two points in it. game gets snatched from beneath him. Yeah, then it's psychologically difficult for him, isn't it? Yeah. Some more, more. Yeah. Well, it's gone to three games once previously when these two met, and that was the last occasion, which is in 15, the second round of the Thailand 16. 500 event earlier this year. 24-22 in the deciding game. In fact, Gunterpong Wanchalong actually had a match point opportunity, but failed to convert. Back level. This is extraordinary. Kenneth's just gone a little bit passive. Quite simplistic with the way he's playing the last, say, four or five rallies. Five straight points. Oh, that's a good net shot. Beautiful. That's a lovely shot. Service over. 17, 16. Early guiding it across court into the open space. Look at that. Racket carriage high. So he could take it early. Very, very nicely done. Something aggressive with pace and power. 18. Any half chance. 17. 
And for the first time in this opening game, move Gong Chu into the lead. Play. Straight at jump upon. Eight of the last nine points. Ask me earlier next time. Play. Yeah. And don't wait until you're about to receive serve to ask for the court to be mocked. If there's an issue, you ask immediately after the rally is concluded. Oh, well, oh. that's a cheap point for Gunterpoint. Game point opportunity. Game point, to Lu Shuffle went the other. Really deceptive shot, and then speed intensity of that rally just went up a whole notch. Steps in well here, and yeah, great bit of deception. So, a second game point opportunity for this man. A roar from the fans here in the arena because the home player Lu Guangzhou has 
has taken the opening gate, having been eight points adrift at one stage. 11, 16 down in the latter stages. And that is a very, very good comeback. Just under 30 minutes for that opening game. 22-20. One game to the good, Lu Guangzhou of China uh, against uh, Guntapong Wancholong. It was a huge lead that the Thai player had in the opening game. But all credit to Lu Guangzhou for fighting back. And I suspect, Chris, that psychologically, that opening game was probably one, more important to Wang Chilong than the fact that he didn't manage to convert. It's a mountain to climb, not just physically now, but also emotionally and mentally. Definitely, and I think it also goes back to the point we just identified about he's just having a bit of a tough run at the moment. Um, everything feels like when that happens, everything's slightly against you. That's what it feels like in reality. I know it's not, but it can just have that bigger impact. One, love. It's so important that he has a competitive, good, confident start to this second game. That's a nice angle, I like that. He was doing that in the early stages too making his opponent twist and turn with good attack. And he started the second game very positive. Controlling the first two rallies, getting the attack, being very efficient. But I do feel when he has the attack on this side, a little bit more dangerous. Just feel that fractionally the drift is, is going from Thank us you. away. Gives you a little bit, just a little bit more power on the overhead. that in the second game as well. Thank 
strange Crystal. challenge. One challenge remaining. So it's over. Well, the answer One, to my question is: three. We can't replicate the four love lead Play. of the open game. Solid defence from Manchalon. 4-1. Well, it was almost a gasp of disbelief from the fans. How did Lu Guangzhou not win that rally? Super rally. Well, this man had to weather the storm in the early stages of that rally. His second attacking shot saw him win the rally. Yeah, and the speed at which both players are coming forward after their attack. Phenomenal. Great defense, great attack from everyone. Both players on court. That's the best we can do. Five, two. Taken. Six. Read that really well. Two. Had a high base after his first shot. Stays forward here. Yeah, hovering. Yep. Where did her pounce? That's at least three or four Service that the over. body attack three, from Lu Guangzhou has found six. its mark. Um, Wan Chalong gets in a bit of a <coughs> muddle when it's pushed at his body. I think he's trying to play that defensive shot with a backhand grip. Maybe yeah. that's the issue. So tough a singles player when it does come at your body because they're so ready to cover the width of the court that the body attack can be such an effective, effective shot. I agree. There's another. But you can only use the body Seven, attack really three. in conjunction with the attacking down the sidelines. Yep. You've got to make your opponent aware that you can hit everything. You want your opponent to almost try and predict something you're not going to do. So yeah, if you just hit body attack, they get used to it. It's nowhere near as effective. You've got to be hitting the the whip attack as well, so that they're fearing that. So then the body attack does become that bit more important or useful. Super angle. Eight, and the big key three. getting to the round the head position early. Got 
Lots of options from there. Play. that one not quite ready backswing's also too big when it's coming at his body just wants it out in front as you can see his opponent who who going to lose off balance and another Five, I suppose if the tactics eight. working why stop it 100% if something's working you do not change it you keep going until your opponent then either realizes or they make the change because forcing your opponent to change is also a big thing, it's hard to change. Oh, my word, that is precision net play Six, on this man moving to Take a look at this. That is perfection. And also his opponent had read it. It didn't matter, it was that tight. finish that rally. Placement here. It's a slight slice to make the shuttle almost stop before he gets to his opponent. This way. Do you think before the match is over, Kentafon may be you. Take the court mopping into his own hands. A few times where he's just not been too, too happy. I think he's either sweating a lot or... His shirt is absolutely saturated with perspiration. Nine, six. You can see it better on his back when he hasn't got a pattern to the shirt. Now you see that's the sort of shot that then makes the body Seven, attack so nine. effective. Yeah, because this placement's incredible. And Kentamon maybe now is ready at his body. That's why it's so important, a little bit of variation. Just keeps your opponent thinking, and they're guessing. See the perspiration on the back of the shirt there. The shirt sticking to the body with the perspiration. Do 
beautiful. That is magnificent. That's a couple of cross courts backhand neck shots that he's played when he's taken the shuttle early to Guangzhou. Here it comes. Just guiding it across court, but that was perfect. More, please, more, please. The big please, thing yes. when you're early, you do have the option, you've got the choice, and to play the shot, it's easier when you're late, it's so In much more middle. complicated. On the line, on the line, middle line. Behind you. In the, in the middle line. Yeah, he's, he's he, wants it. he wants them off. Yeah, one of the issues is that the line judges that are doubling up as court attendants, I'm not sure, speak English. So when the umpire is asking them to mop the middle line, they're simply not understanding. Ten all. So ten all. Rally away from the big game interval. Oh, interval. He's given away a couple of cheap points as Guntapon win one Chalon. And Lu Guangzhou goes to the mid game interval with a one point advantage. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Just a solitary point advantage for Lu Guangzhou here in the second game, having already won the first. Uh, big, big gap. That push from Wang Chilong. Nowhere near. High enough or deep enough. Look, that's just popped up into the hitting zone of the Chinese number two three rank player. And Xu Qi. Fun. The two Chinese players ranked above Lu Guangzhou. Gosh, he's putting on the spurt here. Here's Lu Guangzhou. Yeah, and it's so important, Ken, but he's got to stop this now. The run now, it's it's total change. To think he was 8 3 up at one point in this second game. Yeah. So 11 with 13 points. Now he's, he's controlling the rallies, he's looking comfortable, he's attacking, and it's so important to Kenneth. He's got to change something, he's got to find a way of getting the attack and troubling his opponent. Yeah, now that's clear from the Thai player. I didn't know whether it was supposed to be down the middle or whether it was supposed to be down the line. It was sort of Late. halfway between that half court area. Well, either it needs to be near the line or it needs to be right down the middle. But cuts out your opponent from really creating angles. There's an, a drop shot that went pretty much down the middle as well from Gantapon. I think often when you, 11, you feel the momentum 15. change, you feel the pressure build, you do get a fraction more tense, it's almost impossible not to, and then your shot quality, it just drops a fraction, and then it actually makes it even easier for your opponent. Left. 
Ah, oh, now that's good play from Gantapon. 13. Yeah, much better. Trying to control the rally here. Stepping forward after that block. Reading the game. his aggressive style going through the entirety of each game within each match. This is one of the things we've seen today, kind of the up and down. It hasn't been continuous with his level and his tactical prowess and everything he's doing. There seems to be big dips, but he plays his best. He's very, very good. Prime example, not able to keep the intensity 16, throughout a game. 40. It was a magnificent previous rally, and then that rally was a little tame. down the centre of the court there, watch this, is to try and stop his opponent finding angles, and that's not working. Off balance, it's a short clear, and therefore the oh, push to you and your team for Gunterpont to put the shuttle away. Time is running out. Nineteen. points away from the second round for Lu Guangzhou. 
That's a good lift. Yeah. Stood his ground, he was ready to pounce. Uh, no wonder the Chinese match coaches point. applaud. Because it is five match point opportunities for Lu Guang Zhu. Time. Service over. 16 20. Second game point opportunity. Lu Guangzhou pleases the home fans here in China. Coming from behind in the opening game. Match by in fact, coming up from behind in the second game as well. But he didn't leave it so late in the second game to make his comeback. 22 20, 21 16. In a match lasting 55 minutes. And Lu Guangzhou safely through to the second round where he will have Malaysian opposition. But we don't yet know which Malaysian because Li Zijia and Eng Si Yong are five all in the deciding game of their first round encounter. So confirmation of the scoreline 22 20. 16 in favour of the new grandchild of China. Welcome back to Shenzhen Bay Gymnasium. And our next match, first round action today, is mixed doubles. And is three-time former world champions and winners last week in Kumamoto, Shen Chi Wei and Wang Yaxiong, up against Matthias Christiansen and Alexander Boyer. 